It has taken me a lifetime to like roller coasters, and I don't think I will ever love them. Imagine people who love roller coasters, they must be a little bit crazy to think about sitting in a mechanized car that will thrust you at 70 to 80 miles an hour straight up and then to fall straight down and go into a hurling loop. Doesn't that sound exciting? <laughs> Every time I go to an amusement park with my family, they love it. They're standing in line going, this is great, I can't wait, this is awesome. They're, they're texting friends, they're taking selfies. I'm like gripping the railing of the line going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, why are we doing this? You know, and, and I try to make small talk like, hey, what are we going to have for lunch? Um, <laughs> Trying to get my mind off of the idea that, that I am just entering this, this train of death, right? And, um, and that's where my brain goes. And I, and I remember stories that I've heard like, you know, years after I rode the Rattler at Fiesta, Texas, they had to close it. Why? Well, because the, the wood was brittle and they thought that it might kill somebody by going on the ride. I'm like, but I've been on that ride, oh my gosh, you know? It's, it's scary, right? And so I'm gripping the, the railing, I'm freaking out, I'm sweating like crazy, not because it's you know, hotter than heck in Texas, just because I'm nervous and everything else. And then you get on the rod, and you sit down, and you hear this click, 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 and you have that second, millisecond to think, I can just get out of here and not ride this ride and, and I'll see my family at the end and give them high fives that they did a great job riding the ride and then all of a sudden, koosh, right? And then the seatbelt goes on and then here's the craziest thing too and I'm glad they do this, the safety check but the guy comes by and pushes the harness into you even further and I'm like, why are you doing that? And he's like, we don't want you to fall out. What? <laughs> fall out? Do you see how big I am? Like... I am not going to fall out of this ride. Well, sir, you might. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and you're past the point of no return. You're on that ride. And you're going to ride that whole ride. I was recently at a house concert at the McCorders house, and, and Cynthia and Darian hosted um, Carol Elliott, and she is a local Episcopalian and songwriter and singer, and it was just a beautiful deal, and she had this one song called, You Cannot Ride a Roller Coaster Halfway. <laughs> right? I mean, that was a beautifully honest, beautiful song, and it was, wasn't it? And you cannot ride a roller coaster halfway. When you hear that click, you're in. You're done. You can't at the top of the, the deal go, hey, can you stop this and I want to get off, right? Or in the middle of that first loop, hey, oh, I don't want to go upside down. Can you stop this and get me off? You can't do that. Once you're in, you're in. And you're going to ride it till the end. Here's the most bizarre thing about all of it, if everything else that I've told you isn't bizarre enough. Every time I get off a roller coaster... I'm like jumping up and down. I'm so excited. I don't know why. It was, it, I just like relived hell for a minute and a half. And, and I'm like high-fiving my, my family and everything else. I want to go see my picture. And here's the crazy thing is my kids are like hands in the air with their picture. My wife's like, yeah, she's got her camera in one hand, cell phone in the other, right? She's got the, the, the deal in her head, like, like filming all the action shots. I'm sitting there gripping the harness, and my mouth is open, but I swear to you, not one sound came out of my mouth the whole time that I was on that ride when everyone else was screaming and yelling. But then at the end, I'm still high-fiving everybody going, let's do it again! <laughs> what? Really? So we go back in the line, and I'm like, uh, why are we doing this? Every time. Every time. Every time, Jesus says to us in the gospel today, come and see. Get in line. Come and see. Get in line and see the grace, magnificence, and love of a Savior. And come and get on this ride with me. 
He says, come and see, follow me. And what did the disciples do? They lay down everything. And they immediately say, see you, John. And they go and follow Jesus, right? Did you hear that in the gospel? Like the disciples of John were just like, oh yeah, he's the Lamb of God? Cool, see you, John. We're going here. And immediately they follow Jesus. And they follow him. Hook, line, and sinker. They're in. They have put on the belt of righteousness and the harness of love. They're clicked in. They are ready to go. And they're not in it just to go halfway. Because they know that they can't. They are going to see it all the way through to the very end. They will be the same disciples that were there at the baptism of Jesus, who were there when Jesus called them into ministry. They will be the same ones who are there at his crucifixion and resurrection on the third day. They will be there from the start until the end. And they will be the ones when they recognize finally this whole plan They will be the ones who will be high-fiving each other, saying, this is amazing. Let us now go and share this great gospel of Jesus Christ with the world. They will be the ones who will move from being disciples to being apostles, to being followers, to being the messengers, to being the ones who share the message of Jesus Christ with the world. Come and see. Come and see. Jesus makes that same invitation to you and to me to join him in this ride called eternal life, this ride of faith, this ride that, yes, when you're standing in line waiting to join the ride is a little bit scary. You're going to hear people screaming. You're going to get whirled around in this, 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 this crazy life that we live But if we are willing to stand in line and willing to get in the car and strap in that belt of righteousness and harness of love and to ride it through, God will bless us immensely. God will forgive us eternally. God will make us righteous. God will give us peace even in the midst of the extreme drops and speeds and loops that we will face. And we will end this race. We will end this race, and with the saints of God in the kingdom of heaven, we will be able to give each other high fives of a race well done. Well, what does this amusement park ride, this ride of faith, look like for us? Well, let me tell you, it's, it's this. A third grader from James Madison summed it up for me this week. We started tutoring again this week, and so um, school was back in session last week, but they needed a week to get going, and so tutoring started this Wednesday for the, uh, the winter and spring semesters. And when the San Antonio ISD big yellow bus, the Texas limousine, right, pulled up into the church parking lot, the kids were standing up. Now, I don't know if the bus driver saw them, but they were standing up and their faces and hands were pressed against the windows. They were looking out at the pavilion. They were trying to see if people were there. And as soon as the door opened, the kids ran out of the bus and they were running into the pavilion. They were wanting to be tutored. How does that work? They were looking forward to learning math and reading, and and doing all those things. And one of the kids turned to Grace Roy, the school counselor, and said, I have missed this place so much over the Christmas holiday. Wow. You see, when we get onto this roller coaster, and we're willing to ride it through, it's not about teaching math or teaching reading. And believe me, I've talked to our tutors, it's extremely hard. Some of our kids are two or three or four grades behind in reading. And that's why they come to tutoring. They need to learn, you know, some extra skills as they move forward in their education. And we are helping them do that. But what that little girl missed was not reading and math, maybe a little bit, hopefully. But what she truly missed was sitting at a table with an adult in her life who says, by being there, who says, I love you, 
I cherish you. I think you're important. And I know that you have something to give not only me, but the world. When we consider a life of discipleship, that's what Jesus is saying to come and see. A life of discipleship. When we consider that life and when we consider strapping in on that belt of righteousness and that harness of love and taking that rod, it's not just about coming to church on Sunday morning for an hour or every other week for an hour or joining a Bible study or, or, or even tutoring. It's about every moment of every day realizing that you have just made a lifelong every moment of life commitment. It's not a to-do checklist We don't wake up every morning and say, well, I've studied the Bible today. Good. I don't need to follow it anymore. I've said my prayers. Check. I'm going to be a good Christian for the next 20 minutes and then go along with the rest of my day. When we have said that we are going to be a disciple, we have gotten on the train and we cannot get off. If you get off, it will be sure peril. Peril to ourselves and to our families and to those that we love. We stay on the train and we devote our lives to Christ and and share that love and grace and peace with the world. And it doesn't matter who it is. On this Martin Luther King weekend, we are called once again into sharing the love and grace and majesty of Christ with all people. With equality, with reverence, with dignity and respect. That's what it means to be a disciple. And yes, some days it will be hard. Some days we will be feeling like we're flying um, into a brick wall at 70 miles an hour. Sometimes you'll feel like you're upside down and whirling around. But guess what? God promises us that you will not fall out if you are strapped in with righteousness and love that God gives to us. God gives it to us. Our role, folks, as disciples, is not to make the the to-do list, but it's to live it out. Live it out every moment of every day. Take the ride. Jesus says, come and see. I hope to God that you will not only come to see the line and the ride, and that it won't scare you so much that you will forget to get on the ride with Jesus. And he will lead you through. And at the end, we can stand at the end of that rod and raise up our hands and give everyone high fives, knowing that God has redeemed us and those around us, knowing that we have shared the love of Christ with all that we have met, knowing that we have lived a life of joy and peace and hope, and knowing that the light of the world that is now in you and me overcomes All darkness, all darkness, and that we can share that light with all that we meet. Amen.